All right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. Uh, those who are not familiar with it, this is a YouTube channel dedicated to helping players improve their game at Bannerlord, this exquisite medieval combat game. Um, today, we're going to be doing a little bit uh, more discussion on logistics and moving your armies across the frontier. In this case, um, I have a single large army that's left in my campaign and I'm trying to defend an area of roughly of three or four cities across. So I'm gonna discuss a little bit more logistics today. Actually, we are gonna shift on the fly in this episode. Uh, this castle, Dunglanus, has been attacked almost perpetually. Let's see, I've got an injured horse from the last battle, switching out my horses. Uh, this castle has been perpetually attacked. And the city, rather, of Dunglanus has been perpetually attacked. And because of the size of the defense force there, I know there must be a large force attacking. So we're going to divert and totally change what this episode is all about. Holy shit. Three. There's like fucking 4,000. 4,000 plus troops there. So this is a huge Valandian force. Uh, those that watch the channel a lot are familiar with the fact that this is uh, becoming more and more of a routine thing as I see. Even more f forces seem to be marching in here um, on this assault. This castle, this city rather, has been a, a critical uh, castle sort of in between my frontier and where the enemies fight, and it's we've sort of played tag with it for a little while here. Um, given the size of this force, we're going to run with some reduced player damage. Some people don't like that, uh, but that, that's all right. <laughs> when, when someone can show me how to easily survive a battle of 5,000 troops against 4,000 troops, um, then I'll, I'll, I'll start, I'll start uh, using normal player damage. Anyways, I have other castles that are under siege, but uh, this castle, this city, remains a critical city for me, and we're going to try and defend this today. I'm calling in uh, additional armies here just because I need, I need to have at least a couple thousand to have any kind of a chance to stop the force that's there. Uh, it looks like they're already assaulting the keep, uh, which is, which is beneficial. Um, but this is. This is going to be a bitch of a battle. Uh, I see another large force joining them. So it's almost like I keep adding reinforcements of a couple hundred and they add, you know, 500 or 600. It seems, seems like a, a bit of a, a losing effort to try to call in reinforcements here. Um, so in any case, one of the things I like about the battlefield that this, this attack should be on is that it's a really dynamic uh, looking battlefield. Okay, 23 versus... 2300 versus 4500. This is this is possible. Um, we might be able to pull this off. Okay, so I don't like fighting at night. You guys can see how dark it is. Um, not only will it be poor for instructional um, instructional purposes, I don't think you'll benefit very much from seeing it. I actually don't like fighting at night either. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to let this other force join me. There, that'll give me over. Over 2,000. The enemy's still assaulting the keep. Now I could let them assault the keep for a couple days and really whittle down their army, but with two other, I see at least two other castles under siege, I don't have time to do that in my campaign. Uh, my campaign against seven kingdoms all at the same time, I rarely have time to just sit and wait for the enemy. So I'm waiting for a little bit more daylight here, but I like this map. This map provides a lot of tactical opportunities. There we go, 2600 versus 4300. Easy, right? No big deal, Bye -bye except order. it's Valandia and they've got uh, some nasty forces. So, let's see, they are not... Loose formation. Oh, that's interesting, they are not... So we, I've been seeing this a lot lately too, I don't know if this is a change in programming code. They are not aggressively charging us. They look like they are um, sort of setting up a passive defense ring, which is very curious for Valandia because I think with their cavalry it would be better if they attacked. But I can see them out there, they are just kind of setting up a formation so um, we are going to try to obtain some high ground here on the on the right um, there's a couple little different ridges on this on this battlefield that i like for high ground i find this to be one of the most interesting battlefields for the game uh, there's not a lot of objects to run into which is always annoying um, and there, yet there's also plenty of little pockets and, and hills and, and uh, elements of terrain for us to use so i'm going to position my archers uh, sort of behind me here the 6th and 8th Corps, which are my elite skirmishers, are going to be positioned over here on the right. And then uh, what I'm going to do is here is I'm going to use my cavalry in blocking shield wall formations. Uh, early in this battle, they have one job, and that is to prevent the onslaught of this enormous Valandian cavalry charge that inevitably we will face. Valandia typically has 
uh, you know, something like 40% cavalry, uh, and they're nasty cavalry too. Like there's a, there's a big tranche of them right there. So what we're going to try to do is use our cavalry divisions strictly as walls of steel. Right? We're not actually going to attack. Uh, you can see the second cavalry there in the center, there in shield wall, and the third cavalry uh, positioned just behind me there to sort of prevent them getting through that channel. Meanwhile, I'm going to harass their forces as they move up here because I want our archers to have a chance to set up uh, before we have a little ranged battle. As you can see across this valley, uh, you know, we're going to be exchanging a lot of projectiles. Meanwhile, 1st Infantry, I'm moving up here. Um, again, I'm not entirely sure uh, what tactic I'm, I'm going to try on this battlefield. You know, we're outnumbered about 2 to 1. It's very significantly outnumbered. Um, and these are, look at how many. It's just all sharp shoes, right? They have a ferocious army here. And obviously high level, high level lords uh, in their army as well. You see that? I see the cavalry, their cavalry moving over on that flank. We'll start paying attention to how to see how that does. What I'm basically doing is seeing how my formations are working, right? I want to see if this cavalry charges, if they get kind of stalled by my cavalry line. You can see these guys positioned right here. I'm actually going to spread them out a little bit better. But what they're doing is they're sort of preventing the enemy cavalry from pouring in there and totally mangling my archers. It's paramount to my strategy that my archers are unmolested for a lot of the battle. got a lot of pikes that's so gonna make it difficult but I have a little ridge here I think I think this is gonna be an opportunity to show you what's called an oblique order um, this was this was I can't remember exactly the name of the, the Greek general that performed it he sort of perfected it in the first case it was like 400 BC right some some guy in like the Greek Fenian wars of forever ago uh, but Frederick the Great the, the, the Prussian war general slash leader uh, of the late 1700s, mid 1700s, late 1700s, uh, really, really performed one of the best uh, oblique orders at the Battle of Luthen. Um, this is Prussians against uh, uh, the Austrians, and the, the idea of an oblique order is to essentially—it's a fancy term for for trying to turn one of the enemy's flanks. What you're trying to do is overload one of your formations with troops, right? Put more guys on one side, and in this case, we're moving our sixth, eighth and an archer corps over onto one side and we're going to try to effectively push through on the enemy and then force our way to the enemy's flank. Right? There's lots of advantages to being on a flank uh, and then the idea is using that flank to roll up the enemy's uh, main army group. Right? So we're going to pin them down with the infantry in the front here. That's my first infantry and that's important. It's very important that those infantry hold the enemy in place. Right? We don't want the enemy making any radical formation changes because now I'm going to drag my units down here on the side. Right? I've got cavalry kind of leading in a, in a defensive wall because their cavalry is going to try to counter it. And I'm sort of pinning their guys in here and trying to prevent them from making big movements. Right? We're getting some kills. Actually, it's a screen of green. You can see my cavalry is sort of pushing that our left flank open so that I can position archers. We've got the 5th Archer Corps and the 6th Skirmishers along with the 8th Corps, which is my elite unit, now all pushed onto the enemy's left, right? It's my my right flank, the enemy's left. And what you see what we've done is we've overloaded one side and caused... The, the enemy is not routing, but they're trying to reform in the face of this bold uh, tactical maneuver. Now the beautiful part about it is look where they are. They're at the bottom now of this valley, and our guys are setting up above them right now we've now gained the elevation uh, tactical edge as well as just simply an initiative edge right the enemy's moving they're being shot they're, they're highly disordered uh, and that's one of the keys to, to war is create disorder with the enemy uh, whatever you can do to effectively stop their game plan from from being enacted is beneficial to yours right now this is still a ferocious force every single guy it looks like i'm, I'm hitting with my horn is a sharpshooter Canyon Fiend Champion. Uh, sometimes people say it looks like I'm just beating up on weak armies. Well, I don't know. You, you tell me if it's weak. If it's every guy is a, a tier 5 or tier 6. It's, it seems pretty strong to me. Those, those are like mostly banner knights uh, in, in their cavalry. So we're, we're fighting tough armies here. I don't have like some mod that makes the enemy weaker. In fact, on the contrary, uh, the enemy is typically more uh, stronger than you might fight like a banner or, or a banner knight because I uh, have mods that actually make the, the enemy artificial intelligence uh, um, 
more difficult, artificially so. It upgrades their units simply with a mod I have, and you can check those out in the, uh, in the details. So now this is the other component of this strategy. Didn't have time to explain it, but the enemy now is cut off from their reinforcements. So that you can see their guys are trying to regroup with their other forces, and look what's happening. I've got this cavalry group dragging behind us, I've got infantry charging, and these units had to retreat under a completely murderous hail of darts, right? Their, their sharpshooters are now being sharp shot by our Batanian fiends, uh, and the screen is full of green, uh, just another tactical advantage of, of that oblique order. Uh, I understand the oblique order was kind of quick. That's a really fancy term, like I said, for just overloading and trying to turn one of the enemy's flanks. Um, but at least at least we can show you that. It's highly effective. Of course, it was highly effective for Prussians. Uh, Frederick the Great in the Battle of Luthen, they smashed the army of, uh, of the Austrians, even though they were outnumbered something like two and a half to one. Um, and for us, it's been, it's been highly decisive so far in this battle. Uh, still, you can see the enemy has now a nice long defensive line of a huge amount of troops, and there will be more. Their reinforcements will probably be coming in behind them there. Uh, but we have a little bit of a height advantage here. You can't see my cavalry on the way. Uh, we, we have a little bit of an elevation advantage here. So I have my archers up on this ridge. The infantry are down in that valley. And I have another archer corps that I'm going to position also on this ridge. Right, so now we've got a little bit of an elevation advantage. We're shooting down into that valley. And again, we, what we want to do is stop the enemy from pursuing their goals. So we're actually going to be dragging our cavalry through their archers. Right, what we want to do with that is have our guys shooting, right, our archers shooting at theirs, and their archers highly interrupted, highly disrupted, being attacked, being shot, uh, and that will, will allow us to overcome this, uh, this outnumbered disadvantage. Right, so I've got these cavalry following me, and now charge. Right? Once they're close, I send them into charge, and they wreak havoc. Now, they have tons of pikes. I see every other guy has a spear or a pike. So you need to be careful with your cavalry on charge into that kind of a, a grouping. But they also have lots of sharpshooters. Look at all these sharpshooters. What is that? 500 sharpshooters? Uh, the sharpshooter, if you're not familiar with, is the highest Philandian ranking uh, crossbowman. They're, they're pretty nasty. They have a lot of range, a lot of power behind their bolts. Uh, it's, it's a no joke. You know. See me riding along the edge of the battlefield here? That's because I want to be able to look down into the field and see what's going on. Right. I keep moving because you're going to get shot with arrows if you just stand still. Uh, but I also I like to use opportunities while I'm flying around just to execute a few of their troops when they're running like this or moving around. Right? You got to do it kind of, kind of uh, get in, get out like a quick attack mode. Um, but it, it can be very effective to both command your army and fly around the battlefield and take out guys uh, when their backs are turned to you. So I'm tightening the noose here, but there's something I'm, I'm highly aware of in this situation. And that is, uh, if you remember where my starting point is, it was way over there towards the sun. Uh, unfortunately, the game puts your reinforcements sort of where you started the battlefield. That means if at some point here I have a very heavy loss and I need reinforcements, you know, because the battle gets, gets nasty, it's going to put my fucking reinforcements on the other side of the whole map uh, and literally take those guys like two or three minutes to run to us. Meanwhile, of course, if we're being actively attacked, we're fucked. Right? We're already outnumbered. And if half our troops are running to us from the other side of the map, uh, we are going to suffer very bad losses. So, at some point here, we're going to start shifting guys back. Right? This is a little bit of a, a maneuvering just to simply be closer to our reinforcements. Uh, I don't think I'm just going to be able to hold, the, pin the enemy up against the, the edge of the map the whole battle. Uh, not only are we significantly outnumbered, uh, but there's going to be multiple reinforcement waves, right? This battle honestly has just started, uh, and I need my reinforcements to be closer to me when the battle gets uh, gets a little bit more difficult. So I've got this cavalry line. They have one job right there. Look at them. They are just acting as as a barrier to the enemy cavalry barreling through there and really really taking the battle to us. Right? So the, that cavalry is holding. Holding the line there, so to speak. I guess this is, this is, I thought this was an ally. This is actually a fucking enemy noble. And based on how fast they're fucking swinging that spear, this is a no-joke noble either. They're a fucking high level. I don't want them to distract me from my game plan, though. This is a, a tactical retreat. Right? We're pulling back, hopefully closer to our reinforcements. 
We are suffering some losses on the way out, right? But it's essential that we regroup our formations. If our, if our units are all spread out over a huge battlefield, we have absolutely no chance. The enemy will ride you down with cavalry. Uh, I mean, they're already riding down a lot of our retreating units right now. Now, if you look up there at the death spam, most of that, honestly, is the third cavalry. And here come my reinforcements, you see. If you keep an eye, uh, like, sort of in the backfield while you're fighting, in big battles like this, you will see your reinforcements pop in. You can see him coming in over that, that ridge there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consolidate my forces up on this high ridge. And hopefully it'll be three, four, five minutes. This fucking noble is still chasing me. Hopefully in three or four minutes, uh, you know, this, this enemy force will, will come and meet our force once we're highly concentrated. Uh, I'm going to try to gather up as many troops as I can here. A lot of these are still elite units. I got Panty and Fian Champs in there. I've got some of my elite eighth and sixth corps that made it out. And again, that was partly, I gotta stop these guys here spearing them, I got it. That was partly because I did sacrifice a lot of that third cavalry, right? That third cavalry was holding up in a line. And, and what that is, is basically like bait. Like you take your, your soon to be ex-wife on a hiking trip and you see a bear and you know, you don't want to pay that settlement. Well, you just put on your tennis shoes and start running. You're faster than her, everything's going to be just fine. Alright, so you can see again what we're doing. We consolidated. We now have our reinforcements in here. And I don't want them wasting 10,000 arrows on like three cavalry. So let's hold fire here. You can see there's a few of the enemy cavalry trickling in. But I've got a nice block now, probably 100, maybe 125 archers there. And I'm going to position my infantry just on the other side of this ridge here. Um, if you watch the previous battle, look at this bitch just storming through another high-ranking noble. Just stomping guys, killing guys left and right. Um, this map. For people wondering, I used a mod uh, something like a year ago of real time, like real life. Uh, and it made a lot of the enemy nobles fucking savage. I mean, some of them have, have stats that are just off the charts, right? They're, they're running around with 300 everything and, and maybe above 300 in sub stats. Uh, again, I did that because I wanted a greater challenge, and, you know, a challenge we got, for sure. Okay, so the enemy's starting to pour more units in here. The cavalry's pouring over that ridge, so we open fire, and look at what they're charging into. They're charging into a nasty line of infantry, and look at the death spam. They are getting obliterated by archer fire. Like, they can't really get to those archers because they have to march through this infantry. I've got cavalry in a line there as well. Look at this huge line of enemy just pouring in. Looks like a fucking Black Friday sale, and there's a... A cheap-ass TV for $50 off and a bunch of idiots are storming the gates. Uh, so we're going to have to deal with this, but having those archers up on that hill, it's just raining death on these troops as they come over that ridge. Right? You can see the death spam, even though the enemy is just pouring in, is mostly green. Right? They're just getting obliterated. I'm going to have to join this. Let's bring in the 6th and 8th Corps. We're going to attack the flank. Here. So that infantry is not going to be able to hold back this tide of enemy that long. Look how many there are. So we fly in on the flank. That's what my character is designed for, is attacking quickly, flying in on a flank, and then getting out of there when he's in danger. This is a savage battle. I mean, this, this enemy has very powerful troops and a lot of them. And this is going to be a war. Pulling back further into my archers here. You know, your archers can support you if things get really nasty. Uh, in this case, I've got Penny Fian Champs. I've got high-level archers that can pull out their weapon and at least do a decent job of melee. Because I have half a fucking Blandia attacking me right now. We're in a little bit of a desperate stand here. I don't have any reinforcements emanated, so, so these hundred and hundred and so guys are going to have to hold off the enemy here. And we're gaining levels, killing so many people. People ask how I level so fast. Look how many fucking enemies I have to kill. <laughs> you take on 4,500 enemies every other day and, and tell me if you don't level up a lot. Dodge that spear. Okay, based on the numbers, I have another reinforcement wave coming in. One of the unfortunate things about reinforcements is that the game kind of puts them in large tranches of units, a tranche, like a group, it's a fancy name for a group of units. 
and unfortunately it doesn't allow you as advanced tactics right because i now literally have three or four units i can move around on the battlefield it's not nearly as effective or tactically advantageous as having eight nine ten twelve divisions i could do some murderous things if they gave me ten twelve divisions maybe, maybe there's a mod for that someday nevertheless this is what you're going to deal with as well in huge battles so i'm going to try to show you kind of how to use these units to your best right, i've got cavalry up there it was in a blur i didn't really tell everybody but i put them in a line I might have put him in a. I might have put him in a wall formation. It doesn't really matter. The cavalry there is acting like big. I want the cavalry holding the units, uh, the enemy units, back at that ridge while my archers rain death and our infantry reinforcements get into this valley. The advantage of this valley is that the archers can't really, the enemy archers can't really shoot us. Right? We need every tactical advantage we can in a battle like this where we're uh, we're in a bad situation. We're outnumbered two to one, and the enemy is fucking fierce. This is no pussycat enemy. Look at it, still fucking sharpshooters. Like this is, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes into the battle, and it's still heavy leak in this way. So every Valandian in the whole realm all decided it was time for fucking war today, and, and we've got to take them down. Cut our way through this for us. fucking tough, too. Cavalry are, are harassing our archers, but we have enough archers that are free that they can still rain death down on these advancing units. Critically, too, you see these are archers. These are enemy archers. Very few of them are shooting. They're pulling out their melee weapons and they're marching into battle. That's because they're coming over this ridge and being shot, and being attacked. They don't have a position to, sit, to set up and shoot arrows at us. They could try a flank, like in real life, a, a good artificial intelligence might try a flank. But I've got a counter for that, too. We would simply shift our infantry right into their face and just obliterate them. While they're running to a new position, they get fucking smoked, uh, and that wouldn't work for them either. So our forces are concentrating at the top of this ridge, right? It's a nasty battle, though, right? We're suffering plenty of losses as well. I know some people uh, tell me they watch the battles, even though they don't play Bannerlord. They just think it's sort of cinematic to watch this just giant, sprawling, beautiful battle. I mean, you have to admit it's beautiful. The sun rises off in the, in the distance. There's snow falling. There's body parts and shields and spears flying all over the place. Cavalry are charging and getting dismounted. I mean, it's a beautiful uh, battle from the perspective of, of just graphics, right? It's a beautiful spectacle. I don't know if the Lord of the Rings did anything this beautiful. There's just body parts and people and dead people in the snow everywhere. <laughs> it's a beautiful game. Right now, real war, of course, is horrific. Um, I unfortunately didn't experience any serious real war myself. Uh, but just reading the diaries and novels and books about war, it's fucking horrific. Yeah, we, we sort of romanticize war. But in reality, like, guys getting their arms cut off, this is a horrific fucking thing. So fortunately we have video games where you can simulate all that shit and we don't actually have to have it happen in real life. We can have just this beautiful, mauled death valley here um, and, and get our war output through, you know, through video games where nobody is hurt. Uh, so I'm jumping on a horse to try to fucking clear out some of this enemy cavalry. There's just way too many cavalry in here. You can hear them actually spearing my infant or my, my archers. If my archers can't get set up to shoot, then this strategy, this little ridge battle, is not going to work for us. Um, it has worked very well. You know, I'm not entirely sure. They've got some archers shooting now, so I'm going to kind of tear in here and toss some carnage, cut off a few heads. They they have, uh, you know, gotten some guys to shoot, but so far this ridge has been excessively beneficial for us. Right? Like we have probably killed three or four times as many of the troops as they killed the us. May reposition one more time, but for now this is this is gonna work. You see I still have a large archery block there. From time to time, if I have two or three archery blocks in a situation like this, I'll actually take some of them, like one or two of the archery units, if there are three or four, and I will have them hold fire. I know that seems strange, uh, 
but against such a large foe and such a large battle, sometimes you want to keep uh, some dry powder as a military term, right? You want to keep some ammunition for a more desperate moment. But right now, there's like 30, maybe 50 or 100 enemy in this valley at most. I know there's going to be another huge fucking wave where the enemy just pours over that ridge, and it'd be really nice to have another couple barrels of arrows to fire in there. Right? Sometimes you have to be disciplined with your resources. Another wave of reinforcements. The problem now is that the enemy is getting so close, they're sort of cutting off a lot of our reinforcements. I think I'll continue to try to use this hill, uh, this little valley here. The enemy is just streaming in. You can see him pouring in over the horizon there. Uh, but at some point, I may have to, to change our positioning again. The good news is most of their elite cavalry looks like it's dead. I don't see any more banner lords. I mean, thankfully, we're 20 something minutes into battle. And I don't see uh, extremely high level cavalry. They still have some armored knights, but not, not too many elite armored knights. All right, I got a nice little cavalry line here. We're going to be able to do some things with, uh, with these added reinforcements. We're going to need to, though, as well. I mean, look, you not, I almost spoke too soon and come the heavy horsemen and, and uh, Blandian knights. They're not elite, but these are very high level, very tough uh, enemy cavalry. More than capable of spearing down archers that I'm bringing in. Okay, you can see my reinforcements again are streaming up to this hill. When you have a tactic that's working and the enemy's not adjusting for it, don't change your tactics. Keep you keep using it. Okay. I mean, you can for uh, for entertainment's sake. But in a battle like this where I may not win this battle unless I take advantage of every tactical advantage, I, I, I'm not going to change strategies unless there's a dramatic change in what the enemy's doing, my resources change, or some other reason. I'm going to join them again hand to hand. And I've got some cavalry coming down. Uh, the archers are still lined up, but a lot of them aren't quite in position. I'm going to join them in this melee attack against this next wave. We're now getting down to tier 4. There's still a tier, a tier 5 or a tier 6 in there occasionally, but these are a little bit lower enemy infantry, the kind I feel more comfortable uh, you know, going to battle against. Yeah. Still looks like a fucking sharpshooter though. Concentrating from fire here. Cavalry on the ground are pretty much just dead. Right? Once they're off their horse, these guys are fucking toast. It's rather satisfying too to fucking dismount them and then behead them once they're on the ground. Just like Braveheart, no? Battle of Sterling. Just take out the Lord's horse, big broadsword, and then just behead the dude. Right? Not much more satisfying. And of course, when they're getting up from the ground, just like in Braveheart, right? They're, they're in deep shit. So I'm, I'm actually going to start moving our forces up a little bit here. This hill offers some advantages too. It's a little bit of a, a valley with, a, with hills on either side. That rock there directly in front of me, the enemy won't be able to shoot through that. So if I can get archers pushed, positioned on both flanks, we should be able to use that to sort of funnel them in here. guys pushing in here we're trying to effectively seize the initiative here horses are just there my cavalry is there just holding the enemy off There hasn't been a break this whole fucking battle. It's just been constant carnage. Just rips into this cavalry apart. Their cavalry is distracted by my own cavalry. When that happens, you just fly in with your two-handed weapon. If you're a polearm user or a two-handed weapon user, this is where you fly in and make hay. You kill five, six, seven guys before they even realize that you're in amongst their ranks.
a lot of times I end up killing cavalry, uh, the horses themselves, simply because they're in the way. Right? I want to dismount the guys, but sometimes there'll be four, five, six, seven dismounted cavalry in the way of the target I want to kill. Right? So you just swing your axe until everything in front of you, including the horses, die. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. They're, they're digital, digital horses. No horses were killed in this slaughter. You got to do what you got to do. So we're getting a bit extended here. I'm probably going to have to pull back. Right? And what I mean by extend is my archer support is way behind us now. So we're going to move the archers up, but I'm probably going to have to pull this infantry back as well. If you just have your guys endlessly charging F1, F3, whatever, in a huge battle like this, you're fucked. You have no chance because your reinforcements will be way behind you. Your units will be spread out and totally overextended. You'll get wasted by the enemy, and the next thing you know, the enemy will have the initiative, they'll have the momentum, and you will be fucked. Does anybody else think this battle feels endless? I mean, that's what happens when you're fighting, you know, 4,500 or whatever it is, but this, this battle feels like I'm fighting 20,000. I think it's going well, right? I don't typically look at the status of the battle until the end. I sort of like the dramatic effect. Uh, you know, I, I have just kind of a feel for the battle and an idea that we're doing pretty well. Oh, flying horse. That fucking horse literally, like, got launched into the air. Uh, but I like the suspense. Uh, hopefully, watchers, subscribers enjoy that suspense as well. It's something I frequently do. I don't really want to know or to allow people to know how it's going to end, right? I do show losses. People are surprised sometimes that I show when we lose, uh, but I think that adds to the dramatic effect. And I think it adds to the realistic effect, right? The average player is not out there just winning every single battle. Uh, you know, we, we obviously win the majority of the battles we fight, otherwise we, we would be toast, right? Fighting Seven Kingdoms. Uh, but a lot of the times we end up, we end up showing tough losses, uh, and that increases, I think, the dramatic effect of the close battles like this. This battle is by no means won, right? If I don't execute good tactics from here on out, you can easily lose this battle, uh, even though at the moment I think we're winning. You make a couple mistakes though, and that changes in a heartbeat. Hey, I've still got some companions up here with their unique armor. It's a very good sign. All right, so I, I do have two different archer wings here, and what I'm actually doing is I'm creating a V form. I'm creating a, essentially a modified kill box, or some people will call it like a crane formation with my archers. Uh, making an area where the enemy has to sort of go between them, between those two rocks, and the whole time they do that, they're highly vulnerable to the arrows raining down on them in the valley. Now, the enemy has enough elevation there that if they get their archers spread out, their crossbow, it's going to be a problem. Right? So what I'm going to actually do right now, since it seems like we outnumber them, is aggressively push up into that force and try to annihilate it. Uh, there are going to be some losses here. Effectively, I'm charging with archers, and most of these guys do not have shields. Right? This is not, not the greatest uh, temporary disadvantage, right? They're going to be charging up in without any kind of shield, right? But once we get close, now we charge. And look at the greens, look at the green on the wall, right? That's because, again, we outnumber them. Generally, at this stage, we have a little bit higher level troops than the enemy, and we're taking this aggressive initiative, right? We're pushing in. They're not going to be able to shoot at us across this valley. And meanwhile, we can just look at my shield block them. That's another reason to carry a shield, by the way, is it blocks a lot of blows, reduces damage to your, you know, to your back when people swing at you, and it straight out blocks a lot of shots, even without you, uh, without you holding it. So again, trying to push up, but look at that wave that's coming at us behind it. Always be aware of, of sort of what's up next, right? There's another big wave. In fact, I see 300 archers when I use the, the tab button. There's some 300 archers there, and it looks like 100 plus cavalry. I didn't get a very clear look at the cavalry. The good thing is that the cavalry is kind of marching in. Like they have uh, type 1 diabetes and they haven't had their insulin today. These guys are just sluggish and disoriented and their arms are flying off. Like this is uh, not how you want, not exactly how you want to charge with your cavalry. And so we'll take full advantage of that. When the enemy's making mistakes, don't interrupt them, right? Napoleon. So now I have archers, you can see the arrows flying in on the enemy left flank, that's our right flank. I positioned one of my archer groups that had the most amount of archer, uh, arrows on that flank, right? It's enfilade archer fire, that means as the enemy pours in they're getting shot with arrows, right? and they're being attacked in the front by our infantry and archers. Now there's a problem coming, I don't know if you can see it, it was very brief, but there's a large wave of the enemy archers that are coming, 
and they're shooting now down into this valley. So we become the ones that have a tactical disadvantage. And how do you counter that? I sent cavalry in a big long line right up in front of that archer group of the enemy. It's 300 archers of the enemy and I sent, you know, 12, 15 cavalry. But the sole purpose of that is to distract those archers, to, to, take, to, take a, to take a bunch of the arrows that would normally be just rained on our troops down here um, and to, to give us, to buy us a little bit of time to move our troops around. You see them up there and they are getting shot, right? I see my cavalry are getting shot and killed by archers. I got a nice wave of, of reinforcements here. It's very timely. These guys just pour it in over that ridge. So, with that cavalry there, I've still got archers on my right flank here, providing enfilade fire. Every you know, every few seconds, you'll see arrows flying in from that side. Yep. We're going to keep pushing here with that cavalry up there. This is one of those things where it can go either way. Right, we're outnumbered, and we don't have. Uh, you know, we don't have a huge tactical advantage here, but sometimes you want to charge when it feels like the moment's right. I've got archers again on that right flank. You might have seen I positioned them a little bit higher so they can shoot to the side of the archer or the side of the enemy here. And it's going to take them 20, 30 seconds to get into position. Uh, but once they're there, uh, you know, you can do a countdown like 15 seconds from now. There should be murderous arrow fire coming in on these guys and supporting our attack. Right? We're sort of driving into this huge force of the enemy. You can see my archers just at the, the at the edge of the screen there, moving into position, and here come the arrows. Right? I can see them raining in over my shoulder. Their troops, a lot of them, don't have shields, right? so they're really fucked. You can just see, it's like I have arrows for friends. I'm coming in over the corner on these guys, and they're just getting shot to pieces by arrows. Kill this guy. I'm waiting for someone to shoot him. Guess I'm gonna have to fucking do this myself. Well, we're down to the nitty gritty now. I can tell based on the troops on both sides. I have tier two and tier three troops in there fighting. We are definitely down uh, to some of the last reserves, right? Fortunately, these archers are really hammering them on this flank here, right? Like, these archers are winning us this battle. Those archers that, have, that took 30 seconds to move to that flank are breaking this enemy. A lot of them have shields, but they're, again, if they're, they're charging the main infantry line, they're getting shot in the side by these archers. Right? That's going to give us uh, quite the tactical advantage. I've got another archery reinforcement wave coming. Oh, that's beautiful. Dude, it's a large one. Let's get them up on that ridge. We can have now enfilade fire of archers on both sides. Our main infantry in the middle here is starting to fade away. It looks like to me like we have literally a couple guy, a couple hundred or a couple dozen guys left. Um, so our middle is severely damaged. I'll be bringing reinforcements through the center here. But I like having these archers on the flanks. Give me one more block of infantry where I can charge their force and we're good. I might be down to it. That, that might be all the reinforcements I get. And that's kind of a tenuous, difficult, <laughs> scary moment in battle. When, you, when you're not sure you're going to actually get more troops, right? These guys are low-ranked archers, too. I see guys in pajamas, cloth, uh, and it seems like we're still outnumbered. Maybe I have one more. Hopefully I have one more reinforcement forcing away. Because I don't, I don't think we're going to be able to do it with just this... 150 guys and obviously my health is very low I can't just charge in here and be the hero of the day this is even worse they have cavalry coming in oh I, I think I saw yeah I've got one more wave of reinforcements coming hopefully it's there's two but it's probably the last one we're going to use this last reinforcement wave just to push in as hard as we can here on the enemy I've got to focus myself though too I'm literally a couple three bolts to the face from being dead infantry line let's fucking move these guys straight in there so what i did there is i physically told them to move right into the enemy mass i'm not using f1 f3 charge right when you do that sometimes they'll fucking run backwards they'll run all over the place i want these guys pushed into battle as fast as possible so i put them in line formation and i shoved them right into the middle of the, of the enemy that's bad i've got militia archers getting killed that means i'm down to the absolute felt here of troops 
I'm almost dead, and I've got militia pushing in for battle here. So this is a very close, tight battle. According to the, the top, too, I, I glance at it from time to time when I'm killing people. Uh, it's razor tight, razor close this battle. Look at how many enemies still are falling in. I've talked enough this battle, I'm going to just play this out, I'm going to focus on killing these guys that are pouring in. This looks like our last stand, and we'll see how it goes. I beg your pardon. I do have another infantry wave, so I do want to explain what I'm doing here real quick. I'm going to gather all these forces up, and we're going to make one last stand. Six, seven. The enemy has over 700 troops, and they steamroll. Thank goodness that wasn't my last archer for Because right, that would have been it. We would have been finished right there. I, I don't think there'll be more reinforcements behind this, but uh, assuming this is it, we're going to make our last stand here. Six, seven. Yeah, the enemy has almost 700 troops. We're going to position on this same bank that we were earlier today uh, in what should be a nice little final stand here. We'll either go down swinging or we're going to win a narrow victory. I've got a decent amount of archers, so if I can get them to that wall before they get cut off, some of the guys are getting cut off here, I've got to risk dying to get in here and get some of those guys across, then, then maybe we have, we have a shot. we got cavalry pouring in. I'm one spear from being on the ground. It's mostly red death spam, and that's because we're repositioning. I'm not panicked yet, but this is uh, starting. The battle starting to turn for the worse. Uh, okay, I can get these guys up here. Drop a few of these cavalry. Once they're in position. They should do a better job with these cavalry, holding these cavalry back. I've got infantry now confronting their infantry. That's going to help. And that's going to allow the archers back here to get into position. Infantry, yeah, so... That looked like one more wave of reinforcements. I might have one more wave. So we're going to set this final wave up. I'm going to let the, the game play out from here. And we'll see how this final battle goes. Oh, 
Hazard! Hayır, bir şey yok da! That'll do it. When you have one last reinforcement wave, and a lot of them are elite troops, even 600 peasants and low-level troops are not going to not going to be a major threat. I hope people enjoyed this long epic battle. This is one of the longest, most epic battles I've fought uh, in Bannerlord. Uh, you know, 4,500, whatever, 40, 4,400 troops, uh, and all its full uh, ultra-high definition glory uh, i did upgrade recently to a 4k monitor uh, and, and even faster graphics card so we'll be able to show you these battles in, in their full glory high definition um, i've got a whole series planned around uh, what i'm going to consider uh, calling this entire series under expert tactics we're going to show some tactics used throughout history that are that are relatively difficult to perform um, and a combination of different types of intermediate and advanced tactics used in conjunction and battles that will label our, our expert series on tactics. Um, hopefully people have enjoyed this battle, enjoyed the channel, uh, and please comment as much as you'd like. Uh, the comments, the, the likes, the subscriptions, all of that drives more interaction in the channel. It brings more people to the community. Um, I've already met some nice folks and had some, some great discussions on strategic uh, and tactical uses for troops and, and other things in Bannerlord. Uh, I really enjoy it. I did lose a family member in this battle, but ultimately that, that I call that a success when you can take down 4,600 with your, with your 2,500. Um, thanks again for watching, uh, friends, and I'll see you next time.